I think there are some situations in your life that you have the ability to change and you have the ability to control them. So if something doesn't make you happy where you work or where you live, you can change them. And there are some situations in life that you can't control. I can't control what happened. I can't control losing my leg. So instead of trying to control the situation, which I'll never be able to do, I can control how I respond to it. I'm Lauren and I'm a P teacher and a very keen netballer. <laughs> um, I've been always been quite an active person, so I would be out of the house four times a week, five times a week at netball. Um, I was never really at home. Um, I play it, coach it, umpire. I'm chair of my club. I'm quite heavily involved in netball actually. Um, and if I wasn't and I was out doing something else like club size with the girls or something like that, so my accident was during Storm Eunice and it was probably one of the only days where I've chosen to stay in my pyjamas and watch movies all day. And there was a really loud bang outside. So I went up to the stairs window, looked at my car, nothing wrong with my car, looked out the back door into the garden and couldn't see anything wrong. I literally sat back down to carry on watching the film and then I sort of thought if there had been an accident on the road, I wouldn't have been able to see it. So I put on some trainers to go out the front. Um, as I went out the front, you could see most of the garden wall was down. It was across the pavement and across part of the road. And one of my neighbours had come over and we sort of, we were trying to work out who you call. We didn't know if you ring, we didn't know if you ring like 999 or, or, or what. Um, I knocked for my next door neighbour, so she came out to help. And then she went back in to get some shoes. And as she went to get some shoes, the last bit of the wall that was standing blew over straight onto me. It's really strange. I didn't I didn't even know that I'd been knocked over by the wall. I was then just on the concrete. And it was it was weird. It was like in the TV programs or films when someone gets bad news and everything you know people are talking to you but you can't it's like muffled, you can't hear them. And I was literally just looking at my leg under the wall thinking I'm stuck, my leg's stuck under the wall. I actually went to Lister A&E to begin with and later on that night I was transferred over to Addenbrooke's and Addenbrooke's is where I stayed for, I think I was there just over a month. I had surgery the next morning, so on the Saturday morning I had surgery um, which was to clean my foot and then two days later I had another surgery which was to fix my foot I guess. In the second surgery I'd had, um, I think it's called a skin flap and a skin graft as well, so I've got scarring up my right leg from where they, they did that to try and save the foot. It was quite intense waiting for so long to find out what was going on. Um, I, did, I was checked every morning, so I think I had a con different consultant each day. It was either from plastics or from orthopaedics. And they would check in to see that the skin flap had taken and how the foot was doing. It was mentioned quite quickly that the blood supply to the toes, the vessels are really small, so actually if that's compromised then I may lose a couple of toes. One day where I had three different consultants who came in on the same day, the first one said a couple of toes were, they were done. The second one said a couple of toes, possibly a bit of the foot, but they wanted to wait a little bit longer to see the circulation line. They were looking for it to appear on the foot. And the third consultant came in and he just said baloney amputation. I was really devastated when they told me about an amputation and even being such a sport lover, like all para sports went out of my head completely and I just thought that that was it. I wouldn't be able to teach PE, I wouldn't be able to play sport again. So I didn't at the time, I was very blinkered at the time that I didn't think, I didn't think you'd be able to live. And I, it sounds really strange, but I don't know, I think when someone tells you you're about to lose a body part, your life as you knew your life is sort of over. You've got to learn to live a different way again. I first met Lauren in February this year. She, she'd just recently been discharged from Addenbrook. She'd sort of been home for about a week and I think it's fair to say she was quite sort of emotional. There was an awful lot been going on so when we first met she was sort of quite teary and quite fragile to be fair. Basically just sort of able to transfer in and out of a wheelchair um, and she had sort of started to stand a little bit with the physios but 
she hadn't actually started to walk. It was probably about four weeks after I got my prosthetic leg that Matt challenged me to give up the one crutch that I was using and walk for the first time. And I actually managed to walk outside of their office area and then down the long corridor and out to reception. Um, I, I did give him quite a dirty look when he tried to take the crutch off me. <laughs> but they have, they seem to always know that I can do something before I know I can do something. So sometimes they give me just the little push that I need to actually try something. Normally I'll, I'm quite happy to try things, but sometimes, yeah, they give a little push and it paid off then. Netball is the big thing with, with Lauren. She's obviously a very active, active lady. She plays netball five times a week. She's the chairman of a local team. Netball is sort of, her, you know, one of her biggest passions and something that drives her and something that she's very keen. And I felt it was really important to get that into the physio sessions from sort of the get-go, really. It would be sort of a bit of a fib to say that it was, it's was it been a nice, smooth, linear thing. It's been quite a, you know, a bit of a roller coaster along the way, but she's gone from sort of, well, she, she now has a prosthetic and she's now sort of returning to being able to, starting to return to walk up to work. She's able to walk unaided. She's able to sort of walk out outside and start to get a lot more independence back. So I saw the Rainbow Run advertised online and when I read through it, it was a walk, run, cycle or wheel. So I could have could use my wheelchair. Um, it's a colorful run. So we imagine there's gonna be paint and stuff involved. <laughs> um, and you can select different distances to do. So we chose to do the 5K event. I got so many messages from people, from a lot of my colleagues and a lot of people from netball who said that they would do it with me. And I suddenly then thought, oh, I've actually got to do it now, haven't I? Um, it will definitely be a walk, it won't be a run. We're not, we're not nearly at the stage of running. Um, but I, I just wanted to, I wanted to um, do something for the physio team, because I don't think saying thank you is ever going to be enough for what they've done. And I did have a few friends who, they knew that at some point in the future I would fundraise for the physio team anyway. And they'd said to me, if I did that, that people would sponsor me. It, it, it's really why I became a physio to do something like that and work with people like Lauren and just sort of feel that, you know, we can demonstrate our skills and what we do and take somebody from sort of ineffectively being in a wheelchair to actually sort of getting some a good a quality of life back and getting back up and up on their feet and walking around and being able to sort of return to sort of some of the previous level of function really, so. I think it's been really difficult for my family um, and I think they've tried to keep sort of their emotions out of visibility of me so that I could look at, you know, focus on recovering. So I think, um, yeah, seeing me actually walking and completing something, I think is gonna be quite a big deal for them. I think it's not gonna necessarily be a smooth, smooth ride for her, but certainly because of how determined she is and how strong and brave she is, she will do incredibly well. Um, I think I'm at a point now where I now feel more confident to go and try things and more confident to think about returning to sport. And again, I think that's down to the confidence building that the physios have done while I've been at the list of physio department.